This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. The second aspect to go through and consider now is looking at the dividend received from your associate. Again, old fashioned me is going to go through there and calculate it using a T account. I will show you other ways to calculate it, but if you calculate it in other ways, you could come unstuck within the exam. Okay. Uh, so with the associate, how do we go through an account for an associate whereby we have influence and the power to participate? What was the type of accounting? E equity accounting. Excellent. Well done. Uh, so we equity accounted for it, which meant that we had one line item in the SFP, investment and associate, and one line item in profit or loss and other comprehensive income as share of profit of the associate in profit or loss and share of other comprehensive income, wasn't it, uh, further down. Okay. Uh, so what you've got is, if you think about it again as a T account, you've got your opening asset figure, isn't it, on the SFP. So that's on the left-hand side as a debit. The closing figure is there as the carry forward, ready to bring forward in the next period on the debit side. Uh, for now, we'll assume that there is no other comprehensive income. We'll keep it simple. Uh, if there were, obviously you would treat it in a similar fashion to the profit figure. If there is profit made by the associate, then what we've gone through and done there is that we've increased the investment in associate, haven't we, by our share of the associate's profit. So effectively, we have debited the investment in associate and credited the statement of profit or loss. So that debit to the statement of financial position increases the investment in associate. So that figure comes from the statement of profit or loss. We would also include the other comprehensive income figure if there were to be any other comprehensive income to do with the associates. Okay. Once you've done that, nice and simple, balance things off. You've got there uh, your dividend. So that there is your dividend received. So essentially it's the dividend paid by the associate, which is the dividend that you have received. So that's the dividend received from the associate that goes into your investing activities. Effectively, that dividend there should be P's share of A's dividend. So it could be that you're given A's dividend. It could be that you know your ownership in the associate. So you don't even need to draw up a T account. You just need to put in P share of A's dividend. Okay. And there you have it. So that's the T account. That's the background knowledge. There isn't a huge amount of knowledge to it that is required. Uh, let's go through there and have a look at the example. Okay. So it says calculate the dividend received from the associate to appear in the group statement of cash flows for the year ended December again 2015. So again, you've got there your brought forward and then is it your carry forward? So is it there 180 and is it 190? So I've got there my associates. The brought forward is there as 180. The carry forward is there as... 190 wasn't it what i need to find now is the profit figure okay so what you've got there is you can see that one line item share of profit of associate which is there is it as 20 through the statement of profit or loss so you've got that figure there of 20 that's the profit figure so when you balance everything up you have is it 200 on the left you have is it 200 on the right the balancing figure effectively it is that bank figure isn't it uh, which is there is 10 okay because what you've done is you've received money haven't you you've received money from the associate so you've debited the bank and credited the associates again that 10 whereabouts does it go so remember that is your dividend received from the associate and that goes there doesn't it like all your dividends received 
within your investing activities okay so it's important not only to be able to go through and calculate the figures but also to know where they go because you could potentially be penalized if you calculate the figures and put them in the wrong place so so far we've calculated the dividend received from associate the dividend paid to the nci hopefully you'll find those that they weren't too challenging the theory the knowledge isn't that bad it's when you get to the bigger questions that, that it does get to be quite challenging because you've got all the other elements of cash flows appearing that you've seen in f7 with some complicated p2 aspects on top of it i'll see you all in the next session when we begin to look at the acquisition and the disposal of a subsidiary in a little bit more detail other than that i'll see you all then